If you were watching this after my last video, you may experience an amount of deja vu, but this is a topic that is worthy of its own video, as it is an important tool in your arsenal. People tend to vastly underuse it in anything that isn't raiding or extreme level fights. Whether or not you realized it, you could and should have been using this as soon as you started running dungeons. I hope after this quick crash course, you will be sure to use Limit Break in everything you get it for. Open your Actions and Traits menu, go to the General Actions section, and find your Limit Break button. Even if you are going to be playing a role that does not commonly use Limit Break, you should have it on your hotbars somewhere for use. Just don't have it near stuff you use a lot, for risk of fat fingering the button and potentially wasting it. Through this video, I'm going to emphasize the idea that the only wasted limit break is one you don't use. You actually can just completely waste a limit break, especially if you are a tank. Melee DPS, range DPS, magic DPS, and healers all have cast times to activate their limit breaks. Tank limit break? You commit to it the moment you hit the button. So if you're not even in battle, maybe running into a boss arena, you might accidentally just whack the limit break button, throw a defensive buff on your party, and not even have the enemy hit you one time before it runs out. This is a pretty extreme example of a wasted limit break, but it can happen. So before we even go into detail on the what's and the how's, be sure to place your limit break button in a good spot. Strike the balance between ease of access and impossible to hit by accident. But okay, you found the skill and you picked a spot for it. What now? You can't use it even when you get into the dungeon. That's because you need to fill this little gauge here. You can move it anywhere on your UI, but I keep mine with my hotbars. As you fight, you'll slowly charge the limit break bar. Later in harder content, you can abuse special conditions that give sizable bonuses to limit break charging, but this is something you only really manage in high-end raid environments. The rest of the time, it will be an accident. But no matter what content you are doing, by having your party do things, you build the gauge. When it fills up, you'll get a loud ka noise. This is telling you, hey idiot, Take a second to look at me. I'm important. I do big damage or save your sorry ass when you screw up. That's a bit rude there, Limit Break, but you're not exactly wrong. It's at this point the Limit Break button is now lit up and usable. And depending on your role, you do something different, and the tooltip says as such. Melees get to live out their cloud fanboy dreams and strike a single enemy with a big hit, Ranged pull out a crossbow out of their ass and shoot in a line in front of them, doing damage to everything within range. Mages summon a satellite laser that hits everything within range. You have to do an awkward manual placement of the AoE circle, but it's arguably easier to aim. Healers make sparkly lights appear that heal a percentage of the group's HP and has a raise attached to LB3. Tanks give the party defensive buffs that reduce most all incoming damage by a significant amount. There's a few complications though. The first is, only one person is allowed to limit break. By the end game we'll be doing some 8 man party stuff for basically everything but dungeons, but only one of you will get to limit break at once because the bar is party wide. It's shared, and the moment someone else starts casting the skill, nobody else gets to use it unless they cancel the cast. And there's no way around it. The game will recognize who pressed the button first. But there's more to it. Limit breaks come in three flavors. Strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. That is to say, levels 1, 2, and 3. Obviously enough, each level of limit break is stronger than the last and offers even more power to be worth spending multiple bars on, rather than just one bar twice. Let's take the easy ones first. Tank LB and Healer LB. Tank LB is a 20% buff for 10 seconds, 40% buff for 15 seconds, 
an 80% buff for 12 seconds. Heal at LB is 25% healing, 60% healing, and 100% healing plus revival. In addition, it will not increase the weakness buff from dying. So if you die and get revived, you will revive at full strength, where a normal raise would have a 2 minute penalty of a 25% hit to your main attack stat. I'll get into LB3 situations later, but for 1 and 2, these generally are unfavorable uses of LB. Even for how level 80 scaling affected healing power, Healer LB1 is basically worse than just using your own healing toolkit. Healer LB2 could be a bit more useful in a pinch, but if you're seeing LB2, you're either better off waiting for LB3 if you can, or the boss is about to die anyway. If a mechanic failure gives a healing down debuff as a result of failing, it may be a reason to pull out the healer LB if everyone is in a bad enough shape, but that is an extremely rare situation, and I can't even think of one example. As for tanks, you have to have a very specific set of expectations for their LBs to get used properly. That is to say, the expectation that you and your party are terrible. Okay, terrible is a bit much. Mistakes are bound to happen. People have bad days. Sometimes your entire party is having a bad day. Tank LB will prevent that bad day from turning into a party wipe. If your party screws up a mechanic, that often comes with a few small penalties that add up to one big one. It does a bit of damage, it gives a vuln up, and the boss is going to do a raid-wide attack right after, typically. Tank LB will reduce the damage of the hits enough that what could have been a deadly mistake into something you could survive. The issue is, unlike Healer LB, where you do it after you see the party screwed up, Tank LB has to outright expect the party to do things wrong. Sometimes you have enough time to notice the mechanic is being failed before you'll have to hit the LB button, but more often than not, you don't know until it's too late. Though there is the rare occurrence where tossing in a Tank LB is also a strategy, Typically tank LB2 in that case. Specific example in mind, Zervin Extreme has a mechanic called Soar that... Let's just say people had trouble with Soar. To the point that Skip Soar or Disband became a meme. Other parties would just throw tank LB at it to ensure the party survives. And I have to admit, it was a very effective strategy. I don't think I ever saw someone die to screwing up Soar at all, all thanks to Tank LB2. And I'll get into Tank LB3 later. I mention this specific example for one reason only. I am being extremely harsh about Healer and Tank LB and how bad they are, but there are use cases for them. They are rare. In an ideal world, they shouldn't happen at all but they do happen for one reason or another, and it's important to realize that and keep an eye out for it. If your party is sitting on LB and is about to wipe, that LB may just prevent the wipe entirely. But again, hold your expectations until the LB3 talk. This was specifically about LB1 and 2 for tanks and healers. 3 will get their time in the sun. But for now, Let's head on to the LBs of the DPS. Measuring the power levels of these is harder, because even with a specific base potency, their scaling is likely based on gear. Let's take melee LB as a baseline example. 2400 potency, 5250 potency, and 9000 potency. So LB2 is a little more than twice the power, and LB3 is just under four times the power. But that is a base potency, and its actual power level is scaled to the party. That is to explain further, the listed potencies of LBs do not exist anywhere we can find in the game anymore. These are old potencies that no longer exist, and the current idea is even if these are still the real base potencies, the true potency is calculated based on the average item level 
of all of the party's weapons. While this is confusing, the takeaway I want to emphasize that is, the stronger the LBs are worth it. The potencies are just a general value to see the relation between the different LBs, even if the actual power levels are different. Take the numbers themselves with a grain of salt, but the relation between them holds. With that in mind, let's throw in ranged and mage LBs too. Same power, but different shape. But take note of how close these values are to melee LB values. While you are very unlikely to ever hit just two enemies with a ranged or mage LB, it only takes two enemies to be better than a melee LB. This makes the use cases for both cases relatively clear with little to no overlap. One enemy, let the melee handle it, if they exist. Multiple enemies, leave it to the ranged and maged, if they exist either. Unlike the tanks and healers who needed in-depth explanations as a baseline, DPS have it really simple. Hit button, do damage in your respective situation. It's only after we get into specifics that you start getting exceptions. Tank and healer were only exceptions. As such, let's move on to actually using LBs in different pieces of content. This is the juicy part, so pay attention, especially you AoE LB havers. This is probably the area where most players just completely ignore LB and for no discernible reason. As mentioned before, tank and healer LBs generally don't get used even in bad situations, but they sometimes get used. One specific moment I can think of is the level 69 dungeon's second boss. Multiple points through the fight, he will summon three pillars. Each one requires a person inside the marked pillar area but it will explode and hurt the entire party. I have had more than one party just ignore this mechanic and take two pillar explosions to the face. Here's a little side by side of how painful this is with and without a tank LB1. Depending on how well your party bothered to gear, this could prevent deaths or even an outright wipe. Healer LB meanwhile, uh, get back to me on any examples? Maybe you have one. Tell me in the comments, because I sure don't. But now on to DPS and the fun part. Fun in this case being trying to literally hammer into your skull the idea that trash mobs are more dangerous than bosses. Now, much like there are exceptions to let tanks and healers have your piece of the cake, there are exceptions to the danger bosses pose. The big reason for how this works is due to how the player base tends to handle trash pools. A single pack of enemies will often be weaker than bosses, but still have plenty of situations where they are more dangerous than bosses. Looking at you, Hawkman, before getting here too. But no, the reason for this distinction is usually because of tanks pulling wall to wall when sometimes even a single group of enemies that you have no choice but to fight all at the same time is more dangerous than bosses, the tank pulling three, four, or even five groups of enemies at once is going to be several times more dangerous than any dungeon boss in the game. Granted, we have the tools to handle these kind of pulls, otherwise people wouldn't be trying it, but that doesn't make them any less dangerous. It's all about relative difficulty in the end. Just because this other thing is super easy, doesn't make the other thing any less hard, nor the reverse. Just because I am an ultimate raider, doesn't make the first boss of Sestasha any easier. Okay, never mind. Let's do an actual tangible example of what exactly makes ranged and mage LB actually really strong in dungeons and better than any melee LB you plan to do. In this example, my party does not have the LB filled, but let's just pretend and say it is filled. The tank is pulling multiple groups of enemies, which could be deadly if our healer isn't geared enough for it, but he's going for it anyway. Now, 
Look at this photograph. Let's pull up our DPS LB chart from earlier. Let's take the power and pretend we hit every enemy with it. Now let's look at what skills you were using for AoE at this level. Now, why were you not using Limit Break again? Even once we hit level 80 and start having some really fancy tools to work with, it's hard to argue against such high potency levels. Sitting on a ranged LB is just a waste, especially if you don't even have a melee party member to use it on bosses. Even if you do though, at this point it's probably better to tank LB than to even use the melee LB. An extra 20% cooldown is worth far more for the safety alone than what will probably end up being a melee LB1 on a boss that wasn't going to kill you anyway. And if you're using a ranged or a mage LB on a boss when you had the opportunity to use it on 10 enemies at once, again, what are you doing? And if that didn't make it obvious enough, don't ranged or mage LB bosses by themselves unless you have no other choice. Or if the melee DPS is the one refusing to LB at this point. Sometimes during a boss you will get a bar of LB depending on when you used it prior. That bar of LB should at some point be used, and if the melee won't use it, the ranged or mage can. During trash pulls though, a melee player is going to be a waste trying to use the LB. It's only 50% stronger than a ranged LB and only hits one enemy, so it won't even do much. You're better off using your AoE skills, assuming this isn't a low level dungeon and you have one. Looking at you, Dragoon. Melee come into play for bosses and bosses only. At best, there's like one exception I don't remember what it is. Ideally though, we aren't even going to be given the chance to use melee LB. If LB fills in the middle of a boss fight and it isn't the final boss, I often will not use it, in the hopes that my ranged co-DPS will use it on the trash pack afterwards. My hopes are often wasted, but I at least tried. But if we're both melee DPS, I'll just fire it off immediately. The big thing though is on final bosses. We don't have to get our hopes up anymore about our co-DPS obliterating trash mobs. It's now up to us as a melee when we want to LB. Kinda. There's two more things we want to keep in mind. For reaching the final boss, our LB bar extends to two sections. So if we enter the boss with LB1, we don't want to spend it yet. We'll want to at least try to reach LB2. But there is a too long point for waiting. I usually try to wait until, at latest, the boss has 10% HP left. If for whatever reason you don't have this turned on, go turn it on. There's really no reason not to have it on except for reasons of being less informed. Either way, if the boss hits 10% HP left and you haven't hit LB2, it's probably better off to just LB1. By the time you get to LB2, the boss will have died from LB1. Too long didn't watch? How the hell did you find this part of the video in the first place? But use your damn limit break. It is a powerful tool that should be used. It'd be like not using it AoE in trash pools. Oh yeah, people do that too, huh? For once, the idea that trash is more dangerous than bosses definitely does not hold here. Even if you have a few deaths on trash, it's generally a filler section. But you are still better off using LB on trash anytime it is available, because every boss, your LB will automatically reset to zero. But you only have this LB because the melee didn't use it on the boss. And melee DPS should own the limit break in this content. With some caveats. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Just by being in an 8 man party, your default LB size is 2 bars. Upon entering a boss fight, the LB bar will increase to 3 bars. And unlike in dungeons, 
every boss is allowed three bars and not just the final boss. We're not pretending the last boss is special anymore. As I said, upon starting a boss fight in 24 man raids, the LB bar will be reduced to zero, so if for whatever reason you have unspent LB, it truly was wasted. At the absolute best case scenario, the following will happen. The tank who will pull the boss will start a countdown timer. At 3 seconds left, your ranged or maged party members will attempt to limit break the boss before it is pulled, assuming you have any. This will end up with the boss being pulled on zero and the boss taking an LB2 to the face or multiple if every party didn't use it. Even if it's a weaker LB, it's still a head start on damage. Not a lot, but something. And now on screen, here's a visualization on how often this scenario will actually happen. But okay, we're in a boss fight, we're gaining LB, and depending on how old the content is, the boss is starting to get low on HP. If you're not going to get LB3, you might as well at least LB2. 10% or lower is again the threshold to look out for it for older content. In the newest levels of content, you may want to wait for even 5% depending on the fight. This is less because of how crazy high HP values are for 24 man bosses, but because of dying. This is one of the places you don't want to be trigger happy with LB. There's a couple bosses in 24 man raids that have become extremely infamous for their difficulty on launch. And this is especially true for when people are new. When an instance first comes out, the number of people who are going to die over and over is much higher just by nature of learning curves and how some mechanics can be obscure or hard to see. Or maybe it's Puppet's Bunker and B-Team just murdered your entire alliance by no fault of your own. But for these reasons, we want to save our LB for our first visit by Healer LB3. The bad news is, Healer LB3 only affects your party. If there are 23 people dead and one healer holding the line, Healer LB3 will only raise and fully heal their party and nobody else. The other two alliances will need manual raises, ideally on the healers, so they too can use their healer limit breaks. Healer LB3 is basically an instant cure-all for any and all learning or stupidity that may have occurred. The problem is, it's probably the one cure-all you get. From then on, you just have to hope people don't die or use a manual raise. You won't be able to get a second LB3 before the fight is finished. One other problem is... 24-man boss arenas are... really huge. Like, really, really, really huge. Some of the bosses also come with mechanics that are naturally going to have your party run all over the place and sometimes die. This leads to the further consequence that if your entire party dies and it is time to heal at LB3, you're probably only raising three or four people. For as huge as it is, heal at LB range is still limited, and it's especially so in 24-man content. This also leads to the strange situation that a wasted LB may not actually be a wasted LB depending on the fight. There is actually one or two fights that, at least when they were new, it was safe to just not use the limit break at all, just to ensure absolute victory. In these cases, it's probably better to still LB when 5% HP remains on the boss, but it all depends on what mechanics are coming up next. In general though, unless you see your party is having trouble staying alive through the entire boss fight, 5% is perfectly safe to do the melee limit break, or ranged or mage if you don't even have a melee person. This is also assuming you can even get LB3. Especially on the easier 24 mans, it can be difficult to even build LB to say the least. It's often basically impossible to get LB3 in some fights, even with people dying all the time. You'll have to settle with just LB2. It's still strong, but nowhere near the behemoth that LB3 would be. More often than not, you'll have to just cut your losses. 
But as I said, if nobody wants to use the LB on the boss itself, it ends up staying around. Upon killing the boss, the LB bar will downgrade to a max of 2. So even if you do use the LB on the coming group of trash mobs, it will overall be weaker. You'll never get to use LB3 on trash. At that point, it's probably better to just use it on the trash mobs instead of the next boss, just for one reason. Openers. Most people tend to vastly underestimate how a smooth opener helps for an entire fight, and how much it helps learn a fight. That's a topic for another day, but you yourself may have already noticed a pattern emerging when allowed to start a fight on your terms. Either way, I personally prefer to spend any leftover LB on the next trash pool if there is one between bosses, and leave the boss fight a little extra health. Save LB3 for emergencies, melee LB at some point after 10%, but no lower than 5, mage or ranged if nobody in your party is a melee, and if nobody used it for the boss, just throw it at whatever the next enemy is. Also, tank LB? Probably not ever worth doing. Even if you do prevent your party's wipe, you'll have to raise two other alliances, often as more mechanics come up and kill your group anyway. I can think of one specific fight where a tank LB could save your party and not still lead to a wipe as you raise the other groups. Coming back from a full wipe is actually very common, but a full wipe that was saved thanks to a tank LB? I won't say it can't happen, but it's probably one of the rarest occurrences you could see. One I've maybe seen one time, if ever. But 24 mans are also often relatively low stakes. Even for those super hard bosses in 24 mans, it's pretty easy. The real test is going to be with 8 man fights. This set of content covers a wide variety of difficulties. Hard mode trials, extreme mode trials, story raids, savage raids, and ultimate raids. That last one is kind of an anomaly with how it works with LB, since they've been very fancy there, so let's take that off the list immediately. Let's start with the easiest bit first, hard mode trials. Even in here, heal at LB3 might be worth holding out for, though it's going to depend on what fight it is. Most of all the Around Reborn fights, you can just throw out LB3 the moment the third bars fills, but there's one Heaven's Word trial I can think of that I won't be showing because it is the 3.3 story trial, where you would do well to hold on to LB just in case. This is one of the rare cases where I might even just not use LB3 depending on what mechanics are about to happen. The same goes for the 4.3 trial, since I felt like that one is still prime territory for party wipes. So again, at worst, we'll likely be waiting for the last 10% of the boss's health, then throwing out LB, 5% at the worst cases. In general though, it's pretty safe to throw out LB the moment it fills. Just be sure when a major story event trial is happening, you pay attention to how much harder it is and how the healer may need to save your ass. Or maybe you are the healer. Be prepared to save the team's collective ass if they keep dying repeatedly and painfully. And speaking of horrid story patches, there is currently one instance where tank LB3 is needed to even survive in trials. If you skip tank LB3, Everyone will just drop dead, even the tanks. Those of you who know what fight I'm talking about, don't say it because I'll be removing a comment when I see it. I take spoilers very seriously. The extreme version is the same meanwhile, and that tank LB3 is required, but that's the only trial still. Meanwhile, unless a specific mechanic calls for LB, in extreme content the LB typically belongs to the healers. This content is way harder on the average, and when the fight is new, you may see LB3 as early as 30% left to the boss. Potentially you could see a fourth bar of LB, but that fourth bar is just not worth it. 
If you were waiting for the last 10% on a hard mode trial, you better be waiting for the last 10% of extreme fights. These fights can go wrong at any moment. Sometimes just due to one player screwing up. Just don't get caught up in saving it so much you don't use it at all. LB3 is pretty significant in 8-man content, so as much as I emphasize being safe, make sure you actually use it still. This especially applies when we start getting into the story raids. Story raids are somewhere between hard and extreme trials in difficulty, sometimes getting pretty close to extreme trials in their difficulty. Even though they're story modes, they can get pretty hard at the best of times. The same rules all apply as before, but with a few more extras. There's like two or three fights I can think of where ranged or mage LB get used, but uh, don't count on it happening too often. Unless your party lacks a melee DPS, you're probably not using it as a mage or ranged. But the next extra thing to mention, and it's starting to get into Savage Rage 2, is tank LB3. In all the other situations, I skipped over tanks because the baseline rule I established in the overview section was the 8-man Zervan Extreme, and that covered basically all content in terms of tank LB rules. That is to say, except tank LB3. Just like in that one 8-man trial, there's required tank LB3s in raids. There's one story raid that has a required LB3 at the current moment in time, but there will likely be another in the Shadowbringers raid series. When we include Savage, there's one required tank LB3 in every raid series. T13, A12N and S, V11S, and if I had to guess, E12S and maybe E12N. Knowing what these acronyms mean, are not at all important. The point is, that's five raid fights that absolutely 100% require the use of tank LB3. The pool is much smaller at what might be just two fights in total if you only do the story raid fights, but their existence is good to know about. If you've somehow not seen that fight before, it could catch you off guard. Even if it's still not common, it's one of the few places you need to know to tank LB3. Well, that and ultimates, which, as much as I like those, the rules are much more in flux and not worth going over for what is more a newbie-friendly series. And to finish it off, just like with 24 mans, you can end up lacking on the limit break end. Depending on what trial and the gear level of your team, you could even fail to get LB2. But if you are in your filler section of your rotation, throw out whatever LB level it is. It's better than nothing at all. Even if it is weak, weak is better than none. It's still stronger than what you were probably doing otherwise. Use Limit Break! Just do it. Please? For me? I'm sure a lot of us just forget to. Even I forget to when I'm working on a mage or ranged, mostly because I'm used to being a melee. But this is a useful tool we should be using. It's worth tons of damage and makes everything easier. It breaks pacing for a few seconds in your rotation, but the gains are far more beyond the time lost to use it. Tanks and healers basically won't get to use it unless it's required or an emergency. Ranged and mages get to do big AoE damage on trash mobs, and melees ram their heads into the nearest boss monster. Just please use it. Just don't use LB3 if you're a red mage. Thanks for watching this focused look on limit breaks, and also hopefully actually using them. Please make it a point to use them. I'm not joking when I say how rarely I see other people use limit breaks. It's so unappreciated a skill, and I hope this convinces people to use them more often and in the right situations. Just try it out. 
even if limit breaks don't make or break most runs, you could say that about most skills that are extremely useful. Not required doesn't mean not useful. But thanks for watching, and may the power of Anna Nidhogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Bubalau, Fisher, Jalex, Kathy Nock, Lemon, Meowfie, and Nick. If you'd like to